Australian officials say they're stunned by a draft recommendation from UNESCO's World Heritage Committee to list the Great Barrier Reef as in danger. Environment Minister Susan Lee says the listing will be strongly opposed by the federal government and she joins me now from Canberra. Good morning to you. A lot of people waking up and discovering that the reef is in danger according to UNESCO and wondering why on earth the federal government would be opposing that analysis of it. Hmm. Well, we have been singled out and I'll start by noting that there's about 82 properties that are at risk of climate change that are in the UNESCO books, so to speak, and they've singled out Australia for this unprecedented approach without foreshadowing the decision against the advice that they were giving us only a week ago and in a way that actually makes no sense. I want to make the point, Lisa, I know, I recognise climate change is the biggest threat to the reef. And the European countries take a different view than we do. But this is not the forum in which to express that view. The forum to have arguments about climate change policy is the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change. UNESCO is about the management that each state party does on its World Heritage Sites. And we've invested $3 billion under the Reef 2050 plan and other measures. And I'll stand up anywhere and say it's the best managed reef in the world. What did you say to the Director General of UNESCO when you and Maurice Payne had that phone call with him last night? How strong were the words that you were using? We were very strong and we had a message back from UNESCO and I received this from weekend chats that I had with the Technical Committee in the World Heritage Centre, uh, that yes, we know Australia is doing incredible work on the reef. So we were actually applauded for that work. And you can read it in the draft decision. So uh, on the one hand, we've been recognised for the strong investment we're making to manage the effects of climate change on our reef. On the other hand, it is as if UNESCO is stepping back and making a statement about the Paris Accord on climate change. We are a signatory to the Paris Accord. Accord. Uh, every country in the World Heritage Convention isn't necessarily. So for us to be singled out in a way that completely distorts the normal process uh, was something we were very well, strong about. Uh, and, and we made the point that we will challenge this decision when it comes before the full committee later on in July. Aren't you just simply seeing the result of your government not firmly committing to net zero by 2050? Absolutely not. This decision, as I said, in the framework of the UNESCO Convention on World Heritage Properties is about how an individual country manages its properties. Conversations about climate change, and I know the Europeans don't agree with us in many instances, are correctly had in another forum. So if you're, I mean, there's 20 something reefs on the World Heritage Property list, and this sends a very poor signal to all of those other reefs, none of whom can approach our level of management and investment, but to look to us for leadership, but, interrogate but are... our science and a part of that international con collaboration. So for us to be singled out is quite unreasonable. But, but so do you think if you had committed... Well, do you think that if the, the Prime Minister had committed and that the government was more definitive mm. about 2050 net zero that you wouldn't be having this conversation with me this morning? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, the process has been flawed and the, I'm, I'm seeking to have that corrected, as is the Foreign Minister, in our conversation. However, we expect, because we've seen the draft decision published overnight, that it will go forward to the committee meeting in July. And we, I will certainly be speaking to all of the members of the World Heritage Committee. So. Uh, the point is that this contravenes all previous approaches. Now, if UNESCO wants to break faith with us and its own processes, that is very much a matter for them. But it's very much a matter for me to stand up for the people of the reef, for the farmers that have worked so hard to deliver the best quality catchments along the reef, and for the fact that it's a marine park managed, as I said, to the highest possible standard. We're restoring ecosystems, we're working with traditional owners, we've got world leading science yes. on coral restoration, and I just want to make this point, Lisa, uh, the World Heritage. Uh, committee didn't actually even use the latest data. They did a desktop review. So uh, on all levels, I'm sorry, I'm giving them a big fail and I'm fighting for the reef. OK, well, as the Minister for Environment, though, um, looking more broadly at climate change, what message does it send that your coalition partners have basically not just voted for a new leader, they have voted to oppose net zero by 2050? 
Well, I wouldn't say that. There haven't been any votes. Everyone agrees that we need to get to You wouldn't to net say zero that that's the message possible. they've taken with that vote yesterday. Really, well, Minister? The I mean... they, well, well I've, lis I've listened to what Barnaby Joyce, the new leader, has said, and he said that they'll have discussions and they'll put forward a national's point of view, and they're perfectly entitled to do that. The, m the most important point is here. Yes, we need to get to net zero, but we need to do that in a way that brings people with us, and we all want to do that. So how you measure it and how you judge the point at which you reach it and how you construct it will, of course, be the subject of discussion. I mean, the Environment Minister, no-one wants to get to net zero more ambitiously, if I can put it that way than I do. But I too recognise as someone who represents a rural electorate that we have to bring people with us. That makes sense. So the Prime Minister's statement and the follow-ups I think at this point are quite unremarkable. We will have the conversations about the detail and I'm sure you'll find out about it when we do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.